Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Holeko. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we continued with the fourth season of Veronica Mars, 2019 edition, and continued with the crafting competition show Making It. Now, last week I talked about Making It and saying that it was just a very enjoyable show to let flow over you, uh, and I may have let it flow over me a little bit too much this time. I was multitasking, and then it was over, and I was like, <laughs> did, did, what happened? Did stuff happen? I know generally who... I know who won the second competition was the giant creepy mushroom. And okay, some people are into that fine. (laughs) Um, But I can't remember who won the first one. And it's just sort of the new lady was telling her story and crying. And the two well-groomed white dudes are still indistinguishable to me. Uh And what else happened, Catherine? Were you actually paying attention as part of your (laughs) duty for this podcast? (laughs) Please tell me one of us was. I believe the Birch Forest won the cookies, right? Wasn't the first Oh, that's right. It was cookies. Yes. That's right. They didn't act, you know, they didn't bake the cookies. I was going to say, they, were they, at, I was confused by that because it's like, were these actually cookies or were you just supposed to make something that looked like a cookie in your medium of choice? No, they were all made out of cookies and candy but, so they and told cookie. somebody, I need cookies in this shape and somebody went to bake them? Well, that's a whole nother show now. Yes, that is another show. That's um, like an extra half an hour tacked to the end. <laughs> Mission cookie. No, I think they were store bought cookies. You know, when they were carefully saying chocolate sandwich cookies, those were Oreos. And like okay. one person had what was clearly a nutter butter. So okay. I think they all were right. they were store bought and then they had all, you know, various bits that they could decorate with yeah and that's that seems what like they a did. waste of cookies <laughs> how about we all eat cookies and then do some crafts right well some of them i thought turned out very cute yeah. some of them you know there were varying interpretations of like should it and they just they did talk about this should it look like a cookie or no uh, yeah i remember that now yeah so um some people's Really didn't look like cookies. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so is is cookie a a modeling uh, material or is it a theme? Right. Well, or do you like transform it so much that it no yeah. longer yeah. has anything to do with right. what it once was? So hmm. I personally liked the chicken farm cookie <laughs> setup um, where all the – she made – She made chickens, she made a little barn and grass and stuff, and it was quite adorable, I thought. Yeah. And I think one of the judges pointed out, like, the chickens, they were cute, and they, you could tell they were cookies, you know, Uh they didn't look like, is this made out of cardboard, what is this substance, so, Mm -hmm. they were fun. (laughs) Yeah. I enjoyed the little chickens. Where did they come up with the ideas for these? I, I wonder. Know. Someone was like, let's see, I'd like an excuse to go and buy a whole bunch, a whole of, bunch cookies, of cookies. And candy. they're only going to use some of them, and then the rest of them will be up for grabs. <laughs> right. Hydrox, no. choc- Hydrox chocolate sandwich cookies are mine, right? Because <laughs> they wouldn't be. Right. The the generic or the <laughs> fake Oreo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Chocolate sandwich cookie. Yes. Okay. Um, well, so and then that the was second challenge, a quickly forgotten challenge. Of yeah. Early. No, I remember it now. I no, remember. I thought it was it was fun. It was it was clever. And then Next the second week, one, it'll be make art with fried chicken. And it'll be <laughs> fifty t- <laughs> barrels Yum. of Popeyes in the back room. Sounds tasty. <laughs> I think Nick Offerman would probably. That's right. Enjoy I'm, that. I'm possibly seeing Nick's fine hand in this. <laughs> but uh, we were talking about last time that they they should have snacks, and I guess they just you know 
took yeah, that to the went next with it. level. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking of, you know, some some uh, jelly beans in Amy's pockets, but they went full cookie. So mm-hmm. sure did. Good luck to them all. So then the second one was they were supposed to be making something along the theme of a lending library that you might just find out in the open somewhere with stuff in it. And some of them went with books and some of them went with other things. There didn't seem to really be a rule about that. Yeah, I mean, my my interpretation was that they were doing, like, a little free library. Um, yeah. But for whatever reason, they weren't saying the term little free library. Um, <laughs> and in some cases, it was a little free spices. Well, and right. And then they were tools and- to interpret it in another, you know, however they yeah. wanted. And I mean, I had to question, like, the tool one was so good. And yes. they were just like, well, this is boring. I was like, are you kidding me? He made like a dollhouse. He made like a huge wooden yes. structure. And yes. they were just like totally unimpressed by it. And I a, do not understand that. A giant shellac mushroom for kids to sit under and read books sounds like something that is at every library in the country <laughs> around this time of year. Yeah. And I didn't think. I mean, um, she has a very inspiring story. I don't mean to say anything bad. Yay, her. But, really? Yeah, and I also disagreed with who they sent home, which was the woman who made the Spice Library. Yeah, and which was still fine. Yeah, like, they were like, well, Better, it was possibly. really not successful. Like, uh, it was because her original plan was to have three giant foam peppers, and it only had one. I'm like, yeah. was that a reason to send her home? Because I know. I'm, and she, I thought she she pulled it off. She rescued it well. I thought it looked better, right. really, than it would have with three half peppers around it. Right. And then, mm. and the baseball player, one of the white dudes that you don't know who he is, <laughs> Um, the one who made, the one who made the kite library was, that was very cool. Yes, that Um, was fun. But then the other guy made like a sports equipment lending library. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think he has a very sophisticated touch. (laughs) I mean, some of his stuff, (laughs) like when he made the bike tire, like torso sculpture thing, that was really great. But, um... I don't remember. His cookies were like blobs of paint on a mm. paint on a palette, and then this sporting thing, it was just like a big round baseball, and it didn't really yeah. have room for very much stuff in it. Yeah, that was kind of underwhelming. As yeah, I, recall. Um, I think that the spice cabinet with a giant pepper on the top is probably more interesting than that. Yeah, and it was such a. It was really in the spirit of, like, sharing, you know, recipes and food and cooking with other people, which... I suppose if you have to have a reason to send people home, which is a difficult and hard thing to do, not following through on your original design is a solid reason, whereas everything else is just sort of taste and sensibility. Mm -hmm. But if you can say, you said you were going to do this and you did this thing, which is less, then that's... You know, it's good to maybe set the parameters that that will send you home. But then you have to do that for everybody all the way through. And yeah, not. for and the person you like, say, oh, but it's so much better this way. Right. So keep an eye out for that. Because I feel like they should get some credit for pivoting when they need to Absolutely. pivot. Absolutely. And I feel like I feel like the same thing has happened in previous seasons that somebody has gotten home for not finishing something mm-hmm. or not doing it fully. And then later on, it's been a okay in other situations. So. Right. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. This is this is why really they should have stuck with their original. We're never sending anybody home. <laughs> That's right. I still I beg them next season consider keeping everybody there, giving everybody points each each week. Yeah. Person with the most points wins. Mm-hmm. I mean the the reason why they do these shows is because they're inexpensive, right? They're less right. expensive than a scripted show. So yes. just because you're going to have you know ten people's worth of yeah, cookies and plywood, <laughs> you know, still be cheap. you can still afford it. <laughs> and they're doing this like over the course of like 10 days, right? They're filming it in one quick thing. People aren't going home and coming back the next week, I don't think. Yeah. So why not Yeah. just let everybody stay? 
Exactly. That would make me so happy if they would do that because I really am legitimately interested in what each one of them does Mm -hmm. and would be fun to see each one of them deal with, you know, 20 challenges. Yeah. Um, Rather than just having more and more and more and more and more time to look at the process of fewer and fewer and fewer people. Right. Listen to us making it people. Come Come on. on. We'll give you cookies if you take our idea. (laughs) We'll give you store-bought chocolate sandwich cookies. (laughs) That's right. Mm-mm. <laughs> well, best. shall we move on? Must we move on? Mm-hmm. It's so pleasant in the making it world. It's so lovely. The worst that can happen to you is that you will get eliminated from a crafting competition and then you will, what did they have her doing there at the end? Cheerleading. Cheerleading, right? This is what happens. If something bad happens to you on making it, you get to do cheerleading. Mm-hmm. On Veronica Mars, if something bad happens to you, you get blown up. I would rather stay with making it, personally. Uh, We watched Season 4, Episode 5, titled Losing Streak, and I cracked a funny joke last week saying, you suppose they'll be streaking? (laughs) There was streaking. (laughs) Seriously, Veronica Mars writers? Seriously? Uh, (sighs) The poor mayor (laughs) was threatened by the bomber or someone pretending to be the bomber. Telling him he had to go streak. He actually did. Yes. It was worth it, only marginally, for the scene in which the two head chopping dudes are sitting in some tea room or something, <laughs> yes. sipping sipping lavender lattes and thinking about how nice it would be to have grown up and live in someplace normal like Neptune. And you just know as they're talking that, yeah, streaking mayor should be coming by any minute right. now. And sure enough, because there's windows all over the place. Sure enough, there they go. But also how entertaining that anybody would... Uh, if you live someplace where Neptune seems like a significant step up... Right. Oh, man, I feel sorry for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm, I suppose. But, uh, so, yeah, I will allow it for that, but still. (laughs) The lavender latte was just (laughs) priceless. I I would would watch a a, uh, spinoff with those guys. The Alonzo and Dodie spinoff. Southern California, appreciating the (laughs) fine cuisine and... (laughs) Uh, you know, occasionally chopping off someone's head. Mm -hmm. So this was an odd episode in that there was sort of a cliffhanger at the end of last episode involving the Tawny's kin who the two Mexican dudes had supposedly killed at the congressman's behest, but, oh, here comes one walking over a dune to where some guy we'd never seen before was riding around, and uh, but we didn't hear anything about that. Yeah, this episode had the only the only hint of mention of the whole congressman plot was Vinny searching for the ring. Right. And I going think Logan through the did lost mention- and found at <laughs> at command Comrade Quacks. Yes. Oh yeah, and I Logan think that did Logan send- did mention that the congressman was having a late night or something like that. Yeah. So they're still here. They're gonna be back, I right. fear. I, I did not miss them, except for the fact that it's weird to end with a cliffhanger like that and then just leave it hanging from the cliff yeah. for a whole week where mm-hmm. no mention. Time passes and no mention is made of it. Right. But still, I think probably the actor who plays the congressman needed a little rehab, you know, yeah. to untie himself in the knots <laughs> that he had been tied in. So mm-hmm. uh, you rest up, sir, and we'll see you undoubtedly in a future week. But... Yes. This one sort of doubled down on the, man, is Veronica messed up? I'm so mad at her. I'm not fond of, honestly. I'm so mad at how she continues to just decide that Weevil's doing bad stuff. And yeah, like she does this all the time. Stop it. Yes. Ugh. Yeah, that was a very, very difficult scene. And... Also, Logan is a very patient man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I choose to be mad at the writers for doing this to her rather than being mad at her. It just seems so unnecessarily awful and not fun. Mm -mm. Um, 
Which is not to say that the original show was fun. Terrible things were happening to people all the time. But um, yeah. it's, it's, it's particularly sad that we're this many years on and Veronica is still this unhappy. So, yeah, honey, there's lots of pla- – again, I say lots of places to live in the world. Take mm-hmm. your extremely handsome guy. Get out of town right now. Go find some nice place. Yeah, why don't they – Not here. They should send him to some other naval base. Like, <laughs> I'm sure they have a nice one in, like, Italy or right. or even, like, Korea, I think, might yes. be kind of nice. And like, just go along. Just go with him. Yeah. I don't know. That She would not be happy that way, but still. No. This is, and, you know, stop making fun of therapy and get some would mm-hmm. be really, you know, job one. Yes, for um, sure. But, you know, man – She's she's old enough now that her screwed upness starts to be a little bit her fault. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. If you've gone this long, honey, and you're still this dark, it's because you want to be. Yeah. So. And also, look. like, didn't – so we listened to the, the Veronica Mars Investigations – Mm -hmm. episodes where they talked about the books yes um and they sometimes in this series mention things that happened in the books like we we know it's supposed to be canon right Mm -hmm. but uh, didn't she in the books kind of make up with her mom so why are we not getting any of that relationship yeah because that actress is not available i guess Uh, probably same reason yeah like why they have to go to Nerd Boy uh, instead of instead Mac because Tina Majorino said, you know, a glorified cameo. Thanks. No, thanks. No, I'll pass. Yeah. Although I did very much enjoy Wallace watching Maddie sidle up to this <laughs> kid and start taking advantage of him and like, you know, ha- give them a look of nostalgia for the good right. old days when he was that guy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. You know, if 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 Wallace is only going to get a few short little bits, that was a good one. Yeah, and you know, I'd rather he get short bits than be imperiled. Absolutely, so, and yes. his little baby and his wife, yes. like let him live. We continue to say nothing bad better be allowed to happen to them. Yes. So, um, so theory, Nicole. Good mm-hmm. bad? Boy, I don't know. I mean, they are selling this. Regardless, she's delightful. Yes, for like, sure. Rather like Clyde, you know? The, each, each of the Marses has their buddy, and we trust right. neither of them, but boy, is it fun. Yes. Absolutely. So, I approve. Yeah, I mean, I, they they make a good case for her actually being involved, at, mm-hmm. least, at least in the, maybe not the horse collar, <laughs> but the other bombings. Um, Although since the guy, that guy was roofing people, maybe yes, the horse true. collar. More than the, I mean, More I don't think that ones. Big Dick would care one way yeah. or the other about that. Yeah. So, I mean, they do make a case for it, but, you know, it's it's not time yet. So, yeah. Well, you know, unless it's a combination of, you know, she did some of it and yeah, other people did other and I don't know. Hmm. We did have the return of the Veronica Mars trope of a parent who is exponentially more awful than their awful child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, now we get it. Yeah. Okay. But we did enjoy seeing Martha or Marsha, the yeah. police chief, put him in his place. Tell him to I was sit. Very happy. Tell him to sit down, and he's like, "No, I'm fine standing." <laughs> she's like, "No, you're not." <laughs> I was sit. glad for her because she's taken a lot of beatings in yes, this show. Yes, she has, and I wasn't sure she had it in her, so that was good. Although then he went right out and went to the press and was showed that he was not dampened in his. Yeah. disgustingness whatsoever right. so and when uh pizza guy came home and i was checking out all the camera angles and thinking somebody's in that room somebody's mm-hmm. in the 
he's going to get killed. Yeah, I was die. waiting for something and to happen. I was bracing myself, but also kind of like, finally. <laughs> right. And then the girl came and I thought, oh, somebody's going to kill both of them. And then instead it was, I did not, could not quite see in the brief shot what exactly that was in the bed other than it had a beak. I thought there was a penguin in his bed. Why would there be a penguin? <laughs> but then on the Veronica Mars Investigations podcast, they kindly elucidated for me that it was a duck. It was a duck. Wah, wah. It's yeah. A, which has a significance present because from Clyde. Clyde had just shot him a duck when we saw him and Keith out in the wilds of Neptune somewhere. Yeah, somewhere where they have ducks. <laughs> in, so, in has a very varied ecosystem. Yes. Anything indeed. that you want is a is a day's drive or within a day's drive of Neptune. Right. Yes, and it was amusing when the the woman was like, "Oh, there's something pointy." <laughs> <laughs> then they uncover it. Oh, I think it was his beak. <laughs> Just the way she said that amused oh me quite a, my. quite a lot. Would that we could believe that that character is actually a dead duck. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Clyde. What's taking you so long? Yeah. I. This is – when a character like that sticks around this long, I got to start thinking he's the bad guy. Patton Oswalt's character. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because there's really no reason for him to still be alive. <laughs> and, I mean, even the fact that he's a recognizable face is not a good enough reason for him to be alive. Yeah. So, I don't... Yeah, because, I mean, J.K. Simmons is a recognizable right. face. Yes, and I am certainly sure that he is up to no good. And I imagine Nicole has done things that are not kosher as well. They may both be bombing, but... If if what's his name is if the pizza guy hasn't been deep sixed by now, mm-hmm. nah, he's probably just there to be annoying. But it would not surprise me if in the end he has a mustache to twist and you know right. bombs somebody or does something bad mm. just because he likes the attention. Right, he definitely does like that. Yes, indeed he does. But I doubt. I don't think he put a dead duck in his own bed, however. <laughs> so. Although I, he probably didn't expect to have to get busy with anybody, so that was <laughs> <laughs> he was keeping it there for later. He figured that he could use he could you know make a big deal of it being there and didn't think that somebody else was going to come visiting. Mm-hmm. Oh well, I don't know. He just seems um, fishy over here. Bomber, yo, mm-hmm. yo, yo. Right. Anyway. So is somebody, do you think somebody in some some office somewhere is envisioning a Veronica Mars spinoff with Maddie? Because they are laying on the junior Veronica with her yeah, really, sure really are. thick. Yes. Slightly less damaged. Uh-huh. So, you know, saw her dad killed, but other than that. Right. Unless she has more sad stories up her sleeve, but doesn't seem like. So, yeah. Now, eighty percent more well adjusted. <laughs> but I will say thank you. But no, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, Veronica Mars. Anything else to say? I oh, think that's it. Well, golly, let's look forward to next week. <laughs> Veronica Mars season four, episode six, which is called Entering a World of Pain. Oh, yeah. Sign me up for that episode. Could we skip that one? Do you suppose? Could we just listen to the podcast? Huh? Really? Really? Veronica Mars? Let's just hope it's all a pun that there's a a carnival somewhere called World of Pain and Mm -hmm. they go through the archway. It does sound like it could be a spring break destination nightclub as well this is uh, now that now that comrade quacks got bombed they're going to rename it world of pain yes because <sighs> they're running right. out i mean the, how many episodes of this season Catherine? there's all o- there's only eight so three more three more is mm-hmm. that I, I guess i can make it through that yeah <sighs> can i have a lavender lot be strong be strong <sighs> Then it'll be over, right? Mm-hmm. They're not going to bring it back for another season, are they? <laughs> <sighs> that will be our own world of pain. Anyway, 
We will also continue with a much more cheerful making it. Season three, episode three. Let us smile. Uh-huh. Don't don't have a craft project with dead ducks or <laughs> explosive, please. <laughs> we hope we can trust you. Yes. And that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody.